live. I am so excited that we're here. I just checked on my microphone. Sorry. Um, and today's episode is a great episode. I love this one. Um, and it's really about your body knows how to heal itself. And you might say, I don't, I don't know about that. Does the body really know how to heal itself? It does because think about all your cuts and your bruises that you've gotten over time. Where did they go? They all got taken care of by your body. Your skin heals when it's cut. Your liver constantly regenerates. And for those of you who remember how much abuse you gave your liver, you should be thankful for that. The lining of your intestines regenerate. Your bones grow back. Old skin constantly replenishes itself. Brain builds new connections. We fight off infections. The body is constantly in a mode of healing itself. But we have to understand why is it that sometimes it doesn't heal itself, right? Why is it that sometimes we have certain diseases or we're not able to heal ourselves. And so today we're going to talk about the body healing itself and what things stand in its way of healing itself. So before I start, I always like to introduce myself and let you know how to reach me and my team. And if you're watching us on Facebook and you're watching us live, please type in the word live. It's nice to see you guys here. And if you're watching us on the replay, type the word replay. Don't be shy. It makes us really happy to see you there. No matter what platform you're on, type the word change, and we will know that you want our show notes and the team will send it out to you. If you're on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe because we're awesome. We're trying to make it entertaining. If you're listening to me on the podcast, you're not missing anything. Um, other than the fact that today I'm wearing a black blazer over a t-shirt and always wear the stethoscope that my wife bought me. And of course my hair is fabulous. And no matter what platform you're watching or listening on, please make sure to follow us on Instagram because that's where we are the funniest. So TikTok is where I educate. Instagram is where I try to make you laugh. Sometimes I succeed, sometimes I don't, but I try nonetheless. And no matter what platform you're watching this on, don't forget to share this with the people that you love so that they can become the game changers in their life. And if you don't know who I name, who I am, my name is Efrat Lamandre, and everyone calls me E or Dr. E, depending on how fancy you want to get. And I invented the new method where we empower people to realize that their symptoms are not in their head. And so, well, let me put my name up here. Now you know who I am. Wherever you are, join the conversation. If you're listening to it a week from now, a day from now, an hour from now, let us know that you're here. Ask your questions. We will answer. Trust me. This is what we do all day. Check the messages. And so today's topic is your body knows how to heal itself. Let's get into that. Let's find out what I'm talking about. So cells can actually heal themselves. And you might not even be aware that it's happening all the time, but when they become unhealthy, they replace themselves. If you break a bone, your body heals it, immediately begins to produce new cells to start healing the damage. When your skin is cut, platelets in your blood clot to stop the bleeding. And then white blood cells will come in to remove the dead injured cells. And then there's new cells that repair it, right? Even if you have, even if it's a scar, that's the body repairing itself. And then the daily wear and tear that you have, like, oh yeah, yesterday my knees really hurt and today they're a little better. I have a headache, it's gone. That's your body constantly repairing itself. Our immune system is constantly dealing with intruders, with viruses, bacteria, toxins. There's mucus in our nose, in our lungs, and it's designed to trap foreign materials. And then when they trap them, these white blood cells called phagocytes come in and they engulf them and destroy the invader. There are these cells called natural killer cells, which I always thought is such a cool name. And when they recognize that you've been invaded by a virus, they destroy the infected cell. Inflammation. I usually talk about inflammation, chronic inflammation as a problem, but short-term inflammation is actually your body's reaction to an injury or an infection. So we could start to heal. It allows your immune system to focus on restoring or the infect or, you know, fix the in injured or infected area. Even a fever um, is the body's raising a temperature to try to kill off the virus or bacteria that's, in that's invaded it. So your body is constantly restoring itself we don't even pay attention to it. We only pay attention to it when we're, when we're sick and it's not working fast enough, but it's happening 24 seven. Now, one of the biggest things, and now we have to talk about why, why sometimes it doesn't work, right? Cause sometimes we do get sick 
And sometimes this, our sickness lasts longer than someone else, or we have a chronic issue. So the question is, why is it that sometimes our body fails to heal itself? And what things are we doing or not doing that stands in the way? And that's what I really want to talk about, because if we can improve those things, we can give our body a fighting chance. No pun intended, but yeah, I'll take it. Okay, so what causes your body to stop healing itself? For those of you in the podcast, I always forget to click the little subtitles, and that's why I paused. So I clicked it, and now we're up to date. Did I say watching the podcast? Listening on the podcast. Whatever, you know what I mean. Anyway, so one of the biggest things that gets in the way of healing is not having enough sleep. And I say this all the time to my patients. I say it on every episode. Sleep is just as important as nutrition. It's just as important as your diet. I really, it's not second. It's not second on the list. It's on the same level, your nutrition and your sleep. They have to both be on point if you want your body to heal. I say it over and over again. Getting the correct amount of high quality sleep is crucial. So I've talked about this in one of the episodes, my sleep episode, I think. I want to explain, give you the reasons why it's so crucial. Because it's about repairing itself. So your brain has this internal drainage system called the glymphatic system. It's a system of cleaning and repair for the brain because your brain is so active all day. And part of that activity, it creates waste. So it needs a cleanup crew to come up and pick up that waste. And that's activated at night when you're sleeping. So if you're not sleeping, you don't have the opportunity to clear out that brain waste. And you're going to have kind of a brain full of sludge and waste products the next day. And you won't function optimally. And you won't be able to repair by the way, if you've seen any of my episodes on Alzheimer's, sleep and Alzheimer's, they're so linked. It's insane. So we need to get that sleep so that your brain can heal and not become inflamed or go down that cognitive cascade. But it's not just cognition. Sleep actually helps you repair your vessels, your cardiovascular system. It helps your heart and your blood vessels heal and repair because sleep deficiency is linked to heart disease, kidney disease, high blood pressure. A recent study even found that even modestly reduced sleep, like down to six or seven hours a night instead of the optimal seven to nine, is associated with a greater increase of hardened arteries, which is the cause of heart disease, one of the causes of heart disease. Sleep also helps your immunity. There's a peak number of certain T cells, T cells like our, our immune cells, and they help us fight things off. And the highest that they get to is when we're sleeping. So if we don't sleep, we don't get to produce enough T cells, which we need to fight off infection. Inflammation. You know I talk about inflammation all the time. And long-term reduction in sleep can lead to constant levels of inflammation. And if you know anything about me by now, you should know that inflammation causes disease. Sleep brings down that inflammation. This is why sleep is as important as diet because you cannot sit out here and have your gluten-free ice and think that you figured it all out. You have to sleep, okay? I, you know, your, your diet, your nutrition can be on point and you think you're killing it by waking up at 4 a.m. to go do that run and sleep three hours because, you know, early bird catches the worm. No, none of that is true. You need seven to nine hours of sleep to allow your body to heal. What's the next thing that gets in the way of our body healing? You guessed it. Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. Stress. Stress is in the way of our body healing. And I'm going to get really specific because sometimes we think, oh, stress, you know, you know, it's kind of like this touchy-feely conversation. It is, but it actually has a chemical impact uh, to your life as well. So let me explain why. Our nervous system has two major operating sy systems. One is called the sympathetic nervous system, which produces the body's stress response, your fight or flight, it you know, gets you going. And then there's the parasympathetic system, which is the calm down system. It's also called rest and digest. And our body has the ability, believe it or not, for my stressed out people, your body actually knows how to relax, but we're usually stressed out. Here's the kicker. Your body's self-repair possibility, the ability to self-repair, 
only happens when you're relaxed. It doesn't happen when you're stressed. So if you're stressed, your body is busy managing your stress and doesn't have the time to heal. And let me explain why that is. So if you're getting chased, if your body thinks you're getting chased by a tiger, right? And it thinks that when you have a deadline, something to complete, you're busy doing your errands, your body doesn't know that you created this insane schedule. It just thinks it's constantly being chased by something. So it produces cortisol and epinephrine, and it refocuses all your power to getting through that day to make sure that a tiger doesn't catch you hand in the deadline, do what you need to do, get your crazy list done. Your body's focus on all that increases your blood pressure, your heart rate pumps blood to the major muscle groups just to get you going. Cause it thinks it's saving your life. And when it's doing that, it's dealing with life threatening stuff. It is not dealing with healing and repair. And we all know that stress is bad for you, but did you know that every time you have a negative thought or belief, that's stress. And it happens on average more than 50 times in a day that you have a negative thought. Every single time that you have a negative thought or disempowering thought, the body registers out of stress. And that's a moment that you're not healing. And in today's world, we, we worship stress, right? We worship it because if you're busy, that means you mean something. That means you matter. You're worthy. You're important. The busier the schedule is, the more important you are. We, we, we seem to think that if you're just taking the time for yourself, well, you know, that's lazy, you know, self-care. Oh my God, that's selfish. So we worship stress and we don't understand how much that takes away from our ability to heal. And by the way, stress is not just that crazy list you made for yourself or the crazy schedule that you made for yourself. Stress is also social isolation. So if you know anyone who's socially isolated, that's a stressor. Anyone who is a constant pessimist, who has a negative outlook on life, that's a stressor. If you're in a toxic relationship, that's a stressor. If you are feeling like you have this potential, but you can't get to that potential and you're constantly frustrated, that's a stressor. If you feel like you don't have a purpose in your life or you feel disconnected, that's a stressor. So it's not just being busy but all of these emotions also cause stress. And remember what I said, your brain can't tell the difference from I'm getting chased by a tiger to I hate this relationship. I'm never going to amount to anything. I'll never finish this project. As far as your brain is concerned, all of it is the same thing as being chased by a tiger, which means it's going to focus its effort on getting you out of the stress pump cortisol, epinephrine to get you out under stress, and it's not going to focus on healing. So the takeaway is this, since healing only happens when your body is in this parasympathetic mode, this rest and digest mode, it's critical that we spend time getting ourselves there, that we don't run like lunatics all the time because we're never going to heal, right? So you're out here making the gourmet meals, you know, packing up the lunches, making sure your nutrition's on point, you know, low carb or whatever nutritional plan you're following, doing the intermittent fasting, you're killing it. You're, you're getting all your check marks on your nutrition, but you're so stressed out that your body can't heal. So being, managing your stress is super important. So love yourself. Tell yourself sometimes that you're killing it and that you're awesome and that you're a badass. It's okay. Tell yourself sometimes. I think that's the first time I cursed on this episode, which if you know me is really weird that I haven't cursed so far, but I'll keep it rated G. Helping others, fulfilling your potential, being positive, laughing, like watch shows that are funny. Don't always watch things that are depressing. Having pets. That's a big one. Huge de-stressors. Connecting with nature. Unless you're like me, I'm constantly allergic to nature. And that is really stressful for me, but I go because I love my wife. I love you, Gina. Um, but connecting with nature for most humans is a time of de-stress. Whatever it is for you, do it and do it often with the understanding that when you're calmer, you're healing. Okay. I just have to take a moment to calm myself. So what else gets in the way of our natural healing? Of course, it's the standard American diet, which the acronym is SAD. It's a sad diet. It's so sad and it kills me every time. So 
let's talk about that. If you've watched any of my episodes, you probably know already, but let me just give you like a quick cliff, cliff notes of why it's so horrendous and why it's standing in your way of healing. The amount of starch and sugar in our diet is inflammatory, causes inflammation. It causes insulin resistance, which basically means your body cannot handle all the carbs you give it. And as a result, it doesn't know what to do with it. So it starts building like fat, fat around your cell, I mean, your organs, like your liver, and starts to create all this excess fat. That fat in itself causes something called cytokines, which is inflammatory. So you're eating all these carbs, you're eating the standard American diet, fat is surrounding your organs, cytokines are happening, inflammation is happening, fire is happening. Now this creates a disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, dementia, Alzheimer's, all of it because of the starch and the sugar, and all of it standing in your way of healing because your body is busy dealing with this fire that you created just by eating the standard American diet. On the flip side, because I like to give, right? So we talked about sympathetic, parasympathetic, sleep versus non-sleep. So on the flip side of standard American diet are healthier diets. And I'm not going to get into that, but one of the basic things you could do is intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting allows your body to heal. When you're fasting, you release something called ketones. And when those ketones are released, it sends a message to your body. It's time to increase defense against stress. And it starts to remove old and dysfunctional proteins. It starts to clean up the cells. And basically when you're in a fasting state, you're in a cleanup state. The cleanup crew is released and they start cleaning out the attic. And with all this repair and removal happening, your inflammation goes down, your aches and pains get better, you reduce chronic diseases and heart issues, and your body can now start focusing on healing. Every time I talk about this, people ask me, can you be more specific about what to eat, what not to eat? So it is really individualized, but I'll just do, give you some general stuff that you can do today, right now. And I did a whole episode about this as well. Check it out on Facebook, YouTube, whatever, you, wherever you like to get this information. So number one, just remove the standard American diet. It's high carb, it's high sodium, it's high in processed meat, it's high in refined oils, like enough, just get rid of it. High fructose corn syrup, just take a look at the labels, high fructose corn syrup, sometimes it says high glucose for corn syrup, just get rid of the high sugar, spikes up your insulin, makes a mess of everything. Get rid of the trans fat, the trans fat is like things that, you know, are cooked like French fries and chicken nuggets. Get rid of that. It lowers your good cholesterol, increases your bad cholesterol, hot mess. Remove the processed foods. It's not foods. If you are looking at the ingredients and you don't know what the heck it says, it's not a food, right? Because if cherry is cherry, is one ingredient. But if you have things that have like a million syllables and it looks like you need to be in a chemistry class, it's, it's not a food. Cheese flavored, nacho flavored packaged foods is not a food. It just fills your body with calories and no nutrients. So get rid of those. And then anything, any food that's packaged and it says, you know, made to keep fresh, keep fresh is a fancy word for, we put a lot of chemicals in this. So please stay away from it. And artificial sweeteners out the door and try to remove the sodium. I don't mean table salt. I just mean like the sodium and packaged foods. Again, because if the body is dealing with all this stuff, it doesn't have time to heal. You're actually standing in the way of healing every time you eat that nacho flavored thing. I don't know why nacho is the thing today. Nacho flavored thing. Every time you eat that, you're making a decision for your body to be busy with that instead of busy repairing itself. So you want to throw in omega-3 from wild fish or supplements. Eat the rainbow because there's a reason that the fruits and vegetables have all these colors. Those colors are full of nutrients. Use some good spices, turmeric, ginger, rosemary. Just make these changes to allow your body to do what it does best, do what it does naturally, which is to heal instead of dealing with the nonsense that you're putting into it. And let's move on to the last thing that I want to mention that is in your way of healing. And that is movement or lack of movement. We don't move enough. And many of us don't think of exercise as a preventive measure. You think about, well, 
kind of general fitness, or maybe it keeps your weight on point, or you want to look a certain way in a dress. But in reality, exercise helps us heal. It actually reverses some negative things that are happening in your body and improves your resiliency and immunity. So yeah, exercise builds muscle and builds bones, but it also changes how your genes function, making it less likely to express the genes that may cause cancer or that may make your arteries harder or that you'll suffer from depression. So it actually reverses some things, make sure certain things don't get turned on and it can help you recover. Let me give you some examples. One, researchers found that inactivity, lack of movement, puts us at greater risk for age-related dementia. So for dementia, Alzheimer's, general cognitive decline, you need to move. Research also shows that as little as three months of aerobic conditioning can encourage the brain to grow nerve cells. So if you're sitting on the couch, this is going down. You just gotta move. And I'm not saying you have to join a marathon. Uh, it, the research just says even three months of aerobic conditioning. Exercise regulates your hormones, regulates your blood sugar levels, helps to protect you from developing hormone-related cancers, type 2 diabetes, and, and if you already have such diseases, it helps you manage them more successfully. Exercise boosts immunity. People who exercise regularly, regularly have reduced risk of getting the common cold. What? That's crazy. If you move, you have less of a risk of getting the common cold. There are studies that indicate that people who are physically fit report 60 to 90% fewer colds than those who are not moving. And there's a lot of theories as to why this happens. I'm going to share them with you. Exercise is thought to support immunity by removing bacteria from the lungs because you're like moving and you need to use your breath. So you're moving bacteria around. You're, um, you're flushing out carcinogens because of your circulation and your urine and your sweat. You're sending out a higher concentration of antibodies and white blood cells. That's the body's defense mechanism all around your body at a quick rate because you're moving. Everything is pumping. Exercise also slows down the release of stress-related hormones. So we know stress is bad. Exercise helps bring our stress down. And something as simple as a walk can stimulate blood flow, which brings oxygen and nutrients to your cell while carrying toxins away. So it helps you sleep better and improves your mindset, reduces reducing your emotional stress, and it actually helps you on a chemical level. So to recap, your body has the ability to heal itself. You see it all the time. You just don't pay attention to it anymore because it just happens. You only pay attention when it stops working and you're getting sick. So recognize that you have the ability to help your body focus on doing what it does best, but doing what it does naturally, which is to heal you by making sure you get enough sleep, seven to nine hours, managing your stress so that parasympathetic part of your nervous system can take control and help heal you, making sure your nutrition is on point so your body is not busy processing all that garbage, and movement because movement has so much to do with allowing you to heal. And as always, if this feels like a lot or you want us to help guide you through this, you're welcome to work with me and my team at The New Method on just about every platform except for Twitter, because I have too much to say, 150 characters is just not for me. So at The New Method, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest even, who knew? Pinterest, YouTube, did I miss anything? TikTok, whoa, killing it in TikTok. Find us there, message us there, or go on the website at thenewmethod.com and let us help you become the game changer in your life because you always knew there was a better way. I will see you guys next week. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching today's episode on your body's natural ability to heal itself. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out last week's episode on what your doctor didn't tell you about your autoimmune disease. Speak to you soon.